Hi everybody, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, this is the video I'm doing today for Friday, uh, July 17th. I'm actually doing it a day late, so if you were looking for this yesterday, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I was a little distracted and just didn't get to it, so uh, I'm working on it now. A day late, a dollar short, but here I am. So, uses a regular piece of origami paper. We're going to be doing a seahorse. So get your supplies together and we'll get started. This model starts off using the fish base uh, and I guess that's appropriate. It's a seahorse so we're talking about something that lives in the ocean like a fish. Uh, so let me go ahead and give you a little refresher of course on how you do that particular base. What you're going to do is start off with your paper with the white side facing up, fold it in half, on the diagonal, open it right back up. You're just doing that to give yourself a little guideline because then you're going to fold each side point over to that center line so that you end up with sort of that kind of like an ice cream cone looking effect. Then um, flip the piece around and fold the bottom point up to the top point. So you're folding this basically in half. Then flip it back around again. And the last little bit, you're going to open this up and down and sort of and fold in as you do that on both sides. So you're pulling this down and then folding it over. And then finally, you um, fold down you have it like this, you fold down, and then if you flip it around, you see you have a, uh, a flap here, midway, and then the bottom one. And the other side is a complete solid diamond, and that's your fish base. Now starting with your fish base, with the double flap portion facing down, you're going to fold your piece in half along the center line. <laughs> Obviously that means <laughs> where else would you fold it, right, With, in order to fold it in half. <laughs> um, and then you're going to fold each of these little flaps now up and out on each side. So one side, flip it over, fold it up, and out like so. Next, fold each, uh, you're going to do this on each side, fold this corner over, so you're folding this flap pretty much in half, like that. Flip it around, fold this corner over, like that. And then you're going to take each of these little flaps and just fold the tip of it backwards and underneath in both on both sides fold this little tip backwards so that you've blunted it off like that now you want to create a guideline crease along this, this angle here. So fold your piece back and forth like this. The angle is going from just about opposite where the top of this little piece is and up. To up above this. And then what you're going to do is then use that crease, you, you kind of open it up and then flip it over and see it's going to bend where that crease is and then you can push it back down and now you've sort of reversed the direction here. So now we're going to use that same technique uh, several times over for the rest of this piece. 
Uh, and what I mean by that, you're going to be making a fold and then uh, doubling it back over itself. So in this case, we have our piece, it's, it looks like this right now. We're going to make a fold so that the point at the top here heads back in the other direction. Make a fold like that and then actually open it up just like we did in the other direction. Flip it over the top of itself along that fold and then close it back down. Then the next little bit that you want to do, you're going to make two folds, one right behind the other, about halfway along this. This is really the nose of your seahorse. So you're making one fold and then a little bit further behind that one, you make another. And then the point of that is the, the fold that's furthest behind you're going to sort of pinch this whole bit in and fold that part back over. I don't know if you can sort of see what I've done here. I'll finish it and then that way you can you can see how it looks when it's done. Like that. And when you look inside, you can see that it's almost like accordioned back the the fold that you made that was further back is out on top here and the next fold that you made is where it's sort of doubled back on the inside. So it gives it that two level kind of an effect. Then take the very very tip of this nose and just fold it inside and underneath because you want to blunt blunt off the end of the nose like that. You don't want it to be pointing. And then finally, the last little detail that you're going to do, and you can see the folds I've already done. They're starting along the back side. This is the back side of a seahorse. And if you remember, when you look at a seahorse and it's going along, its, it's tail curls to the front like this. So we're going to create the, that curl by a uh, a series of the same kinds of folds and what you want want to first do is to make some creases and the um, fulcrum of the crease I guess you could say the point of the crease because it's gonna be like a a, a v-shaped crease that you're gonna make and the um, back of that V is gonna be along this spine here so you're gonna do um, Four, working your way down the um, tail, four of those types of V creases so that you can then start the process of bending this tail and uh, what you'll do is push it up along that crease. See? So you want to complete that all the way around. Alright, and there you have it. There you have your completed seahorse. And the last little thing you're going to do is, after you do your four um, triangular creases, is just to fold over the tip of that tail to really give it a good curling in. And if, I, if you look in on the back here now, you can get a really good sense for how those triangular pieces fold inside. Here you have it. Now on uh, Monday, we're going to be doing, um, it's called a tamper-proof letter. And really it's just a way to sort of roll up and seal a letter so that it can never be re- uh, re-rolled the way you did it the first time. It's, you're going to use a piece of printer paper. It'll be very, very quick one. Uh, we'll get through it very, very quickly. So I'll see you back here on Monday. In the meantime, have a good rest of your weekend. Sorry this one got up a little late. Uh, I'll catch you back here soon enough.